Hello, welcome to another episode of Faith and Food. Today we are making risotto and we are talking about Sabbath. One of the reasons I think risotto is such a great Sabbath meal isn't because there's no work involved, though we often equate Sabbath with doing no work, but because when you're making risotto you have to stay completely focused. All the distractions of the world that you experience in, on a regular basis have to go away as you make this wonderful but easy and simple recipe. The only key is some good technique, some great ingredients, and time, and you will be able to make this dish. The other thing I'm going to be demonstrating today is I'm going to be chopping an onion. Uh, people, a couple of people have asked me uh, whether or not I can do that because I haven't done that in any of my videos yet, so I'm going to be talking about that here, and then we're going to come back and we will get started. See you in a minute. Okay, we're going to chop an onion here. Uh, I have a couple of wet paper towels underneath my cutting board. That makes it stable so it doesn't slide everywhere. And we're just going to cut off one end of our onion here with a good sharp knife. A dull knife is a dangerous knife, so you don't want one of those. Then we cut lengthwise through the root side, cutting it in half. I'm going to peel this off. It's always a little cleaner on actual television, but we'll make do here. Okay, leaving the root on makes it stable. So then you're just gonna cut through it. So we mentioned earlier that you need really great ingredients to make really great risotto, and we have those here. We have uh, two uh, cartons of chicken broth or stock, whichever you can find in your um, soup aisle. This is low sodium so that you control the salt content yourself. We've got our old friend squeezed garlic, some nice olive oil, Parmesan cheese. The most important part of the risotto is our arborio rice. You're going to want one to one and a half cups of that. I'm going to post this recipe, so don't worry about writing any of this down. You're going to need half a cup of white wine. Uh, very often you'll hear TV personalities say you want to make sure you cook with a wine you're willing to drink. And a lot of people think that that means you have to buy expensive wine. That is not true. Uh, any kind of dry white wine is fine, six to ten dollars for a bottle. Uh, you'll be in good shape. And then we're making mushroom risotto today, so you're going to want to buy, uh, we have half uh, button mushrooms sliced, and we have a half a pound of a more exotic blend, portobello's oyster shiitake mushrooms that are going to help flavor our risotto. So we're going to be back, and you're going to see us over the stove. We're going to start putting all of this together. Okay, we're going to be sweating our mushrooms while our broth is coming up to the simmer. You do not want to use cold broth with this recipe. Make sure you're using broth that's been warmed up. But the first thing we're gonna do is sweat our mushrooms out. They're gonna help build up some flavor in the pan. We're gonna remove those to a plate and then bring them back into the final dish. A quarter cup of oil in there. And that oil is going to be used um, for, our, for our rice and our onions as well. A little bit of salt here. And then these look like pretty big mushrooms, and they are. They are going to cook down uh, quite a lot. We are going to start making our risotto. We're going to just add a little bit more olive oil into the pan. It got a little bit dry. Once we do that, and we're going to begin sweating our onions, once we begin this, we will not stop until we are done. So we're going to be sweating our onions for a couple of minutes. We had sweated our mushrooms for about five to 10 minutes, depending on how big the mushrooms are. And this is going to be a method of making rice, onions, the white wine, the chicken stock, that is going to be constantly stirred until we are 
complete it. So, got our onions going. They are going to stir until they're just a little bit translucent. Are they a little hot? So we're going to turn down. Okay. starting to brown really nicely. So now we're going to add a little bit of garlic. One good healthy squeeze from our bottle. And it's starting to its fragrant just about another minute. Yes, there's a couple mushrooms still in there. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Now we are going to be adding our rice. The arborio rice is a rice that we're going to coat in oil and, and the onions. Uh, this is actually called the pilaf method. You've heard of rice pilaf. What we're going to do is kind of toast these, coat them in the oil, get them ready to absorb all that great chicken stock and the white wine. And this is going, you're going to do this until the arborio rice is just fragrant. <laughs> now, once you get to this point, when your rice is getting fragrant, you're starting to smell all those flavors coming together. We're going to add our first dose of liquid, which is going to be our white wine. a cup of white wine right in. And we're going to stir this until the wine, and this smells good, until the wine is absorbed. Now, the alcohol, of course, is going to cook out of this wine. You do not need to worry about that being part of the final recipe. We're just going to get a good concentrated flavor. It's going to bring a lot of, I mean, it's a savory dish, but this is going to up that ante also bring some of what they call umami, even though I don't like that word because it makes me sound pretentious. The other thing that you have to do here is stir vigorously and constantly. And once we get to the chicken stock, I'm going to explain why that's important. Okay, our wine is absorbed. We're going to now start adding chicken stock. One cup at a time, so you're going to need a one cup ladle. And as you add, you're going to stir vigorously. You cannot stop stirring this or it will begin to stick. Now that we've got to our sort of base recipe in here and we're just going to be adding stock the rest of the time and stirring without stopping. I want to talk a little bit about Sabbath and why I think risotto is a perfect dish for it. Sabbath is one of those things that we all talk about, we all want to take more of, but very often find it hard to find time for. One of the reasons is that we get so distracted with the things of life. We have demands of kids, school, work, sometimes even church. And so we get distracted from the call of God to extract ourselves from the work of the week and find our rest in him. The great Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann says one of the reasons that God institutes the Sabbath in the Ten Commandments in Exodus is that as the people of Israel are wandering through the desert and they are becoming a holy people, dependent on God for all that they need, God finds a way for them to be extracted from the ever-increasing brick-making production quotas that were a part of their life in Egypt and slavery under Pharaoh. Obviously, we don't live in that kind of world now, thank God. And yet, we know that we are all part of systems and places where the production quotas can sometimes get ratcheted up. Risotto and cooking it constantly, constantly stirring, means that you have to be focused on this. You have to be in the moment. 
So I'd encourage you as you're making your risotto, as you're stirring it, put on some good Christian music on your iPod or your, um, your iPhone, as the case may be. Maybe tell Alexa to play one of your favorite playlists. Get to stirring, invite the kids to take a turn, and just relax as a family to make this wonderful dish. It can make a great vegetarian meal. It can also make a really, really fun side for the holidays. And it only takes about 20 to 30 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes of focusing on cooking and focusing a little bit on God will do your soul very well. We're gonna keep stirring, keep adding chicken stock, and we'll see you back here as we get ready. To okay, just one to two ladles of our chicken broth left. You're gonna know that you're ready, and this is at all stages. You're gonna know you're ready for more broth when you can do that with a spoon, and it's gonna part like the Red Sea. Okay, when you do that, then you're ready. You can obviously stop stirring while you're getting your ladle ready. Just gonna get up some, get some stock here. Pour that in, and then get back to stirring. So we're gonna do that. We'll see you back here in just a second to finish everything right on all of our chicken stock that this is gonna need. We have tasted for doneness. We want it just a little bit past al dente uh, for our family's liking. Top colloquial on top shelf, but not like that, but we're not on top shelf. So we tasted already, so we're good on uh, doneness. Next we're gonna add Parmesan cheese. Do this before you test for salt and pepper. There's a lot of salt in the Parmesan cheese. This is half a cup. We're just gonna add that all in. Our half cup of Parmesan cheese. We're gonna add our mushrooms back in. These are coming with us. Cool. This would also be the time when you would add frozen peas if you want to do that. A lot of recipes call for that. Um, oh, this is looking really good. We're going to get some shots here in a second of what this looks like. I've also uh, killed the heat. I don't want this to keep cooking. All right, so got that there. Now we are going to test for salt and pepper. We're doing really good. Just a couple of cranks of salt. That's all you're gonna need. I'm also gonna add a little bit of pepper just to up, just to awaken it up a little bit. And then we are ready to go. Okay, so this is our finished product. This is our risotto. We are gonna plate up and we're gonna take a picture of that for the website, for the film. Uh, this is about uh, 40 minutes total time once you get into it. Uh, and I think that we are gonna have a really, really nice lunch, a nice day of rest. I hope you enjoy your Sabbath coming up. I hope you take a Sabbath, and I hope you enjoy the risotto recipe that we've linked to.